Good evening, I am Kelsey Wheaton, and this is my oral interpretation. For my interpretation, I will be reading from The Country of the Point of Furs by Sarah Orne Jewett. I'll be reading a selection from Chapter 21, The Backward View. The days were few then at Dunnet Landing, and I let each of them slip unwillingly, slip away unwillingly, as a miser spends his coins. I wished to have one of my first weeks back again, but those long hours when nothing happened except the growth of herbs and the course of the sun. Once I had not even known where to go for a walk. Now there are many delightful things to be done and done again, as if I were in London. I felt hurried and full of pleasant engagements, and the days flew by like a handful of flowers flung into the sea winds. At last, I had to say goodbye to all my dead at landing friends, and my home-like place in the little house, and return to the world in which I feared to find myself a foreigner. There may be restrictions to such a summer's happiness, but the ease that belongs to simplicity is charming enough to make up for whatever a simple life may lack, and the gifts of peace are not for those who live in the thick of battle. I was to take a I was to take the small, unpunctual steamer that went down the bay in the afternoon, and I sat for a while by my window looking out on the green herb garden with regret for company. Mrs. Todd had hardly spoken all day except in the briefest and most disapproving way. It was as if we were on the edge of a quarrel. It seemed impossible to take my departure with anything like composure. At last I heard a footstep, and looked up to find that Mrs. Todd was standing at the door. I've seen to everything now, she told me in an, in an unusually loud and business-like voice. Your trunks are on the wharf by this time. Captain Bowden has come... Captain Bowden can come and pick them down himself, and is going to see that they're safe aboard. Yes, I've seen to all your arrangements, she repeated in a gentle tone. These things I've left on the kitchen table you'll want to carry by hand. The basket and even be returned. I guess I shall walk over to the port now and inquire how old Miss Edward Catlin is. I glanced at my friend's face, and saw a look that touched me to the heart. I had been sorry enough before to go away. I guess you'll excuse me if I ain't down there to stand round on the wharf and see you go, she said, still trying to be drunk. Yes, I ought to go over and inquire to Mrs. Edward Kaplan. It's her third shock, and if the mother gets in on Sunday, she'll want to know how the old lady is. With this last word, Mrs. Todd turned and left me, as if with sudden thought of something she had forgotten, so that I felt sure she was coming back, but presently I heard her go out of the kitchen door and walk down the path toward the gate. I could not part so. I ran after her to say goodbye, and she shook her head and waved her hand without looking back when she heard my hurrying steps, and so went away down the street. When I went in again, the little house had suddenly grown lonely, and my room looked empty as it had the day I came. I and all my belongings had died out of it, and I knew how it would seem when Mrs. Todd came back and found the logic gone. So we die before our own eyes, so we see some chapters of our lives come to their natural end. I found the little packages on the kitchen table. There was a quaint West Indian basket which I knew its owner had valued, and which I had once admired. There was an affecting provision laid beside it for my seafaring supper, with a neatly tied bunch of southern wood in a twig of bay, and a little old leather box which held the coal pin that Nathan Todd had brought home to give to poor Joanna. There was still an hour to wait, and I went up to the hill, just above the schoolhouse that sat there thinking of things, and looking off to sea, and watching for the boat to come in sight. I could see Green Island, small and darkly wooded at that distance. Below me were the houses of the village with their apple trees and bits of garden ground. Presently, I looked at the pasture beyond. I caught a, presently, as I looked at the pasture beyond, I caught a last glimpse of Mrs. Todd herself, walking slowly in the footpath that led along, following the shore towards the port. At such a distance, one can feel the large, positive qualities that control a character. Close at hand, Mrs. Todd seemed able and warm-hearted and quite absorbed in her bustling industries, but her distant figure looked mateless and appealing. There was something about it that was strangely self-possessed and mysterious. Now and then she stooped to pick something. It might have been her favorite, Pennyroyal. And at last I lost sight of her as she slowly crossed an open space on one of the higher points of land and disappeared again behind a dark clump of juniper and the form of birds. Now this is the part where I tell you why I chose this particular passage to read. Um, to be honest, I 
didn't much care for Country of the Point at first. I thought that there was, thought it was kind of dull because I didn't think there was a lot happening. But I will say I did like this chapter. Um, this is one of the few chapters I liked because I feel like even though there's not a lot going on in this chapter, there's so much like underneath. It's you know on the surface it's just oh she's leaving, but when you take it, um, when you take it a step, a step further, you know, it's different. There's a lot more going on than somebody just leaving town. Um, so, basically, what's going on in this passage is she is leaving town, and it seems like already she's starting to be isolated by her decision. But she, I mean, our narrator, um, in case that wasn't obvious. Um, She's already being sort of isolated by her decision to leave. She said at the bottom of page 111, um, it might be different in a different copy. I have the Barnes & Noble edition. Um, she said, Mrs. Todd had hardly spoken all day except in the briefest and most disapproving way. It was as if we were on the edge of a quarrel. So, Mrs. Todd, who... She's, our narrator's been very close friends with throughout the story, is kind of um, shutting her out almost. Probably because Mrs. Todd doesn't want her to leave, so we already get this sort of idea of isolation, and then later on, towards the bottom of 112 and the top of 113, the narrator says, there was still an hour to wait, and I went up to the hill just above the schoolhouse and sat there thinking of things and looking off to sea and watching for the boat to come in sight. So again, she's by herself. This time she's going to go wait for the boat. And she's just watching Mrs. Todd from the distance. And, you know, she talks about how seeing Mrs. Todd close up, she appears to be one thing, but, if you, but looking at her from afar, she's completely different. It's almost almost as if she's becoming a stranger again, which she started out the book as being a complete stranger. Um, there's also a sort of sadness to this chapter. Um, one passage in particular that I thought was especially sad is um, about the end of 112. When I went in again, the little house had suddenly grown lonely, and my room looked empty as it had the day I came. I and all my belongings had died out, out of it, and I knew it would seem when Mrs. Todd came back and found her lodger gone. Um, so we die before our own eyes. So we see some chapters of our lives come to their natural end. You know, Jewett doesn't just say that. Uh, Jewett just doesn't have her say her narrator just say, "Oh, I packed up my things. All my things were packed up. The room was empty." No, her herself and her belongings had died out of the room. It's sort of this, prof it's this more profound sort of sadness that, you know, almost as if her time here was so insignificant. She's left nothing behind except for an empty room. And I unfortunately didn't get to read all the way to the end. Um, that proved to take longer than I thought it would have. But at the very end, she just sort of loses sight of Janet Landing as soon as she's gotten far enough out to see. It's almost as if her time there and the big role the town has played in her life, it's almost as if it never existed at all. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, it's just very, as I said earlier, it's very profound. And it creates these really strong emotions. Like, I actually started to feel a little sad reading this. I was like, oh, it's really upsetting. I mean, I can kind of relate to it, having to, you know, leave this place that you've become rather accustomed to. I've moved a few times in my life, and I know that that last day is kind of really bittersweet. Like, you're excited to go to this new place that you've never been before, but at the same time, you don't want to leave behind what you've known. Um, the same can be said about visiting people for a while. I, uh, visited a friend of mine a couple summers ago and I only spent a week out there but it was you know it was something I'd never experienced before I'd really never been away from my parents for that long and I really liked it and leaving was hard because I liked where she lived I liked her friends you know I felt felt like I was getting to know the place and then I had to leave 
so I kind of I kind of feel like I understand what's going on in this chapter and maybe that's part of why I liked it so much is I feel like it's a little bit more relatable than some other parts of the book like all the fishing I am um, with the fishing I know nothing about fishing I don't even eat fish it's probably completely irrelevant I'm sorry um, finally the last thing I wanted to talk about was there was music that I had playing I decided to play some music to enhance the reading the song I played is called um, Anagatios by Elvati, and I played it because it's a song that for me evokes really strong emotions of like sadness and uh, loneliness when I hear it like I always feel like it should be a song for you know like a departure you know a funeral perhaps and I thought it would really enhance the selection that I chose to read because the narrator's like experiencing these feelings of like sadness and having to you know having to depart from this place that she's become rather attached to so I thought that this went along with that very well Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this interpretation, Dr. Rigsby, and thank you.